Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I am Aditya. In this video, we will be writing a simple unit test for our component. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I will be using the same pro project that I created for shopping cart and metamask wallet and there was like a detector something that I did in previous videos. So if you haven't checked those videos, please do check those videos through the playlist uh, or through my video list. But here we will be just using the same project. So I have created a counter component, which is very basic component, which has increment, decrement button, the counter, and that's it. So if we increment it, it increases, decrements, it decreases. So what we need to do is we have to write an automated test for this component. Now let's first understand the purpose of tests to be precise, the automated test or unit test and why or where or what test sh we should write. Okay, so let's begin with this, the main advantages of writing automated tests. Now let's say we have this component, everything is working fine, that's great. Now, just to have that confidence that everything really works fine, because this is a very simple component, but let's say we have some complex component. So to just to say like, okay, this component, whatever we have written, will work 100% right or near 100% right, we write tests for that. And what are those tests? We just give them some input, there will be some output and we just say, okay, whatever is the expected output matches with the actual output. So that's all basic logic about it. And the unit test, which we are going to write now, refers to, as the name suggests, testing per unit of your project. In this case, the component counter component is one unit of our project. Because remember, we are bringing the home dot view and here we have this counter component. So it just, we will be writing test only for this one. There is also something known as end to end testing where we can just test the entire app using this UI or we can use tools like Cypress, Cypress <laughs> to write end to end tests as well. So pretty amazing thing. So what we are going to do is to begin with, first we'll be installing B test. So V test is one of the testing tool test. And along with this, I will need other things as well, just as well for that. And so test utils. Now, generally when you create a view project, if you check that you want these testing tools as well, these packages are, packages are automatically installed for you. So you don't need to worry about it. But let's say you have a project where you haven't installed testing or those testing tools, then you just need to make sure that you need this three packages. So if we hit enter, this should install all these packages for us. Okay. Now, if you notice inside my package.json, I've also returned this command over here, which says vtest, then with environment of JSTorm root and where is, where can I find my test? So it's, it will be inside the SRC folder. Now, if you notice it's asking for JSTorm, so we need to also install this one. And there we go. Now, next thing we need to do is go inside our folder. And inside the folder, we can write tests inside the components. So here we need to create another folder, which would be underscore, underscore tests, underscore, underscore. Now, these are the naming conventions. So you just need to stick with them. And here I need to write test for counter components. So I'm going to say counter dot spec dot TS. If you're using TypeScript, then TS. If you're using JavaScript, then JS. I'm using TypeScript. So I'm going to write TS. Now, once you have uh, created this file, the next thing we need to do is we need to write this. Now, the next question is what test to write? Because if you notice in our counter component, we have this HTML, we have these functions and so on and so on. There are two things you should be worried about. First thing, not writing unnecessary too many tests. And second thing, keeping the boundary of that where we should like, how far we should go in writing tests. Okay. So what I generally like to do is, I pick up particular sections which I feel like, okay, these are very, 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 very important to test. So for instance, I need to test this button triggers because I need to make sure that this button should be clicked properly. So I need to test these buttons and I also need to make sure when the button clicks, this test text over here is rendered correctly. So for instance, the count will start from zero as you could see over here. So initially when the component mounts, I should be able to see this too like this text with count starting with zero. And also after that, I should be able to, when I click this, I should be able to see that the count increments here. So the count should become one decrements, then the count should become zero, depending on what's the order of my test. So to begin with here, 
first I'm going to import certain things. So I'm using Copilot as well. So you might see Copilot helping me. Let's see if it helps. So here I'm going to say I need describe. Then I will need it and I will need expect from vtest. Now what's happening here is we are getting these functions. So describe, so describe will just be describing the test. So what, what does it do? It will be then what does this test should do and expect it just to get the output and just check the our expected output is actually equal to what we are actually expecting. <laughs> okay. Next we will need now as we need as we are testing the component. So we also need to mount that component. So we, we will be simulating the scenario where the component mounts and once it mounts, then we can see the text and we can then click the buttons, all those things. So there is a functionality known as mount that comes from not wheat plugin vtest, but it comes from different things. So it comes from the view test utils. Now, once we have these things, next thing is writing our test. So here I'm going to say describe. So this is the test for counter component. And then this function describe function takes two parameters. First is the plain text. So just to describe your text test and then the callback that will be your test. So here the first step will be, okay, I just need to make sure that it renders correctly. So this, I can just use copilot for this. So what's happening here is it says, okay, the description for the test. So here, this test for counter component, there will be one test, which is it should render correctly. So the component should render correctly. So we are using the mount function from the view test utils. So we mount that component and whatever we get will be the plain, like all the properties of that component, which is going to be more like a view component, this wrapper. From this, we will get the HTML. Whatever HTML we get, we just need to make sure that it matches the snapshot. Okay. So let's run this test. To run this, we will say npm run test colon unit. Okay. Now, as you see, like it exactly matches the snapshot. Now, next thing we need to do is, okay, this was mostly for the snapshot. But what if I want to see that this component, once it mounts, it has this text. So I'm going to copy this text from here. And here I'm going to write to contain. So this component or whatever this HTML has, it should contain the text that I'm passing now. So this text over here. And if I hit save, you'll see it reruns the test and you'll see it passes all the tests. So what's happening behind the scene is, okay, it's extracting the HTML from this counter component. Okay. And in this HTML, I expect to contain this text over here, current count colon space zero, something like that. Now, next thing is I need to check the button. So it should increment correctly. So here I will need to find the button. And then once we get the button, we can proceed forward. So first thing is get the component first. So here I can just simply get the component. Now, if you notice this wrapper is actually we are like, we will be mounting the component again and again. So what we could do is we can get this outside over here like this. And then we can just reuse it like this. Okay. So here, once we have the component, now the next thing is we need to find the button. We need to trigger the click and we need to say current count expects one. Now the problem here is we have two buttons over here uh, in the counter component. We have two buttons. So one is like incrementing button and decrementing button. So which button to find? So for that, what we will do is we'll specify the button that increments this uh, trigger. So in our case, we have a button which has a data type of increment. You can give it ID, you can give it class, doesn't matter. We just need an identifier. Similar to how we use in JavaScript DOM that we need an identifier to get the HTML element. In the same way, I'll be using this data type. So here I will say, okay, I want a button with a data type value equal to increment. So that will be my increment button. Now, once you find this button, click it, that means trigger the click over here. Then whatever HTML you get, you should have current count colon one. Now what's happening here is of course, when you increment the uh, button, sorry, if you hit this button, you see that it has this current count of one. So we are getting the exact same result. So that's why the test is passing. Let's say I say here 10. Now this should fail the test. 
you'll see like it failed because we were expecting 10 but actually it's getting one so this is how you could do like more of a unit testing for this now let's do the same thing for our decrement button so i can just copy this from here put it over here i should i will say it should decrement correctly okay so here i will say decrement now i'm triggering this decrement so in this case it should go back to zero ideally but let's see if it does so if we check this there we go all three tests are passed because what's happening here is okay if i start from beginning so here we have zero incremented one then decremented back to zero so we are having this in sequence that's why i say sequence matters when you write the test if by mistake i write this minus one this will throw an error so if we go over here or not error but it will, it will fail the test because it went from one and then decremented so it should go zero perfect so that's all in this video hope you enjoy this video if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button if you feel this video is worth sharing with your network please do share with your network and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel so see you in the next video till the next time goodbye